find us when he comes. Awake, Awake and, and ready. ready. And when he asks us to dedicate our lives more perfectly, how will he find us? Awake, Awake and ready. Divine Mother. Divine Father. Mother. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Friend, beloved God. Friend, beloved God. Great Master. Great Master. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Babaji Krishna. Babaji Krishna. Lahiri Mahashaya. Lahiri Mahashaya. Swami Sri Yukteswar. Swami Sri Yukteswar. Beloved Guru. Beloved Guru. Paramahansa Yogananda. Paramahansa Yogananda. Saints of all religions. Saints of all religions. With deep love and gratitude. With deep love and gratitude. We bow before you. We bow before you. Bless us. Bless us. With spirit. With spirit. That we may commune with thee. That we may commune with thee. With deep love. With deep love. With deep joy. With deep joy. Help us to experience thee. Help us to experience thee. And make us your channels. And make us your channels. That we may share your divine truth. That we may share your divine truth. In our daily lives. In our daily lives. Oh. Peace. Peace. Amen. Amen. Listen to these words from Swami Kriyananda on our affirmation for this week, kindness. When you can view all human beings as members of your own extended family, your brothers and sisters, mothers, fathers, and children, then you will find wherever you go that love awaits you, welcomes you. It is God who gazes back at you when you behold him in all. Kindness is the recognition that all are truly our own. Kindness comes from not minding how others feel about us. It comes from the simple understanding that kindness is its own reward, worth giving out to others because the source of so much sweetness in ourselves. For those of broad sympathies, the very universe is home. And let's affirm together first in a strong voice. The whole world is my home. The whole world is my home. And the human race, my family. And the human race, my family. With God's kindness, I embrace all men. With God's kindness, I embrace all men. Little softer now. The whole world is my home. And the human race, my family. And the human race, my family. With God's kindness, I embrace all men. With God's kindness, I embrace all men. And in a whisper now, taking it deeper inside, the whole world is my home. 
and the human race, my family. With God's kindness, I embrace all men. And now silently broadcasting it from the spiritual eye, the whole world is my home and the human race, my family. With God's kindness, I embrace all men. With God's kindness, I embrace all men. And please pray silently with me. Divine Mother, help me to see that by kindness to others, I attract not only theirs in return, but thy kindness as well. May I be kind to others always. May my kindness act as a channel of thy unselfish love. Oh, peace. Amen. My name is Dharma Devi, and this is Narayan. And this week our topic is the best way to worship. And I'm reading to you from Rays of the One Light, Weekly Commentaries on the Bible, and Bhagavad Gita by Swami Kriyananda. <clears throat> Truth is one in, it, in your deathless self within the following commentary is based on the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. In chapter 4 of the Gospel of St. John, the woman of Samaria asked Jesus, where is the best place to worship? This question might be expanded to include, what is the best church? What is the best religion? Is it important to go on pilgrimage to holy shrines? What is the best ritual? What is the best mantra or prayer? Jesus cut across all such questioning with his reply. The hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit, and in truth. It is not that our outer considerations of place, church, ritual, etc. are irrelevant. Each person should find those practices and observances which are compatible with his own nature. One might say with his own vibrations. Not everyone's natural path is the same. God sent different religions into the world to satisfy different human needs. The overarching concern, however, considering that the goal is to find God, is to include in one's worship daily inner communion with the Lord. God is silence. He must be sought, therefore, in inner silence. God is absolute love. He must be sought, therefore, in the silence of love. God is spirit and thus immaterial. He must be sought, above all, in the expanding peace of deep meditation. Thus, the Bhagavad Gita states in the sixth chapter, sequestered should he sit, steadfastly meditating, solitary, his thoughts controlled, his passions laid away from every craving for possession freed. Wherever you are, whatever your outward beliefs and observances, seek God in the silence of your own soul. Thus, through Holy Scripture, God has spoken to mankind. Om, Om. The topic is on spirit, and we have such a spirited community. I, I want to express just how grateful I am for each and every one of you. Is it such a? I came out. I was just struck by the. I'm sure you all were by the altar. And Grinnell put the flowers together today, and it reminded me. You know, of a friend was sharing about meditation with Dharma Devi and. It, she said that he gave this visualization of the Srimad Bhagavatam talks about the lotus, 
but he was giving a visualization of a rose. And really the whole purpose of the spiritual path is awakening that lotus, awakening that rose in our heart. We could have the most beautiful church, right? We could have the mega church, and we could be doing all sorts of rock band chants. But if we don't have that inner love for God, it's all for naught. So along those lines, I want to share today from Whispers from Eternity. I want to feel thee just behind the voice of my prayer. O oh, Father, thou art just behind my vision with which I see thy beauty without. Thou art just behind my listening power with which I hear thy voice in all creation. Thou art just behind my touch with which I feel thy world in the sweetness of flowers and in the zest of sustaining food lies hidden the essence of thy blessing, thine eternal sweetness. Thou art just behind the voice of my prayer. Thou art just behind the mind with which I pray. Thou art just behind my glistening feelings. Thou art just behind my thoughts. Thou art just behind my cravings for thee. Thou art just behind my meditations. Thou art just behind the veil of nature's splendors. Thou art just behind the screen of my love. Behind all these mystic screens, reveal thyself as thou art. So since the, the topic is on what is the best way to worship? And Christ says this answer to the woman in Samaria, if you recall that story from the Bible, what is the best place to worship? And he responds, God is spirit, and he must be worshiped in spirit and in truth. And so I thought to share with you some spirit through if you'll indulge me, a couple ghost jokes. What is the type of shampoo that a ghost uses? Shampoo! <laughs> <laughs> what is a ghost's favorite pie? Booberry pie. Thank you, Preeta. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that out of the way, <laughs> this is a very, yeah, it's the essence of our path. Master talked about, the, he summarized the path as self-realization, remember? And how he gave the definition to that phrase, he said, it is the realization that God's omnipresence is your omnipresence. And that you don't have to pray that this omnipresence come to you. That all you have to do is improve your knowing. And so it's the real temple. Master said it again and again. We have a, this new quote on our wall. Make your heart a hermitage and your robe your love for God. That... Where is the hermitage? Where is the temple? Where is that sacred shrine that we're looking for? It's like that Indian legend, right? Where God says, where should I hide myself? The farthest orb of the universe? No, the deepest nook in the farthest reaches of the deep sea? Oh, I know. I'll hide myself in man's heart. And you know... We, we get to that point, though, I know we all have, where, like St. Augustine said, our hearts are restless, Lord, until they find their rest in Thee. It's so utterly simple that we just, we can pass by. Like that story Jyotish and Devi told when they were 
uh, leading a meditation course, and they had like a little table, maybe with flyers, uh, you know, sharing about the course. And th this couple, th these two women, came up and said, "Oh, what is this? Oh, meditation? Oh, we we did that already." <laughs> you know, like as if to say, "Oh, like, well, it's us too, right? Do we feel like, oh, well, I." I learned to meditate. I practice Kriya Yoga. I, I've got that already. But do we? we? Any technique really is not without the spirit. The Master said it again and again. It's Kriya plus devotion. That's what works like spiritual and mathematics. We can get the technique, but nobody can teach us that subtle art of loving God, the divine romance, the great romance. Master talked about it again with Kali. Do you remember there was a story of Master with Kali? When he would love Kali, right? He worshipped God at Kali being God as divine mother, worship a lot in Bengal and in India. And that's where Master grew up. And when he was, I don't know, a young boy, maybe he was 10, 11 or so, his friends knew that he loved to find uh, a new temple. And so they were walking one evening and one of his friends came and said, I found Mukunda. Friends, I found a new temple to Kali. And he expected that Mukunda would just be overjoyed and want to go to this temple. But Master said, no, no, you go. You go to the temple. They said, you're not going to go to the Kali temple? He said, no, I'm going to retire this evening. And what did he do? He went back to his home, to his little attic room, and he went into the temple of his heart. And he burst out this prayer to Divine Mother. And she came to him in a vision. And he said, oh, Divine Mother. And she said, my child, wherever you go, wherever you are, I will be with you in that shining omnipresence and when you call to me as well, I'll come to you in this form. Master's life, he's teaching us that in spirit, what, what did Christ mean? God is a spirit, and he must be worshipped in spirit and truth. The Swami's giving us the hint here, right? Spirit is it's something immaterial. It's telling us right there that we can't find God through the form. We've got it. We have to find him through that spirit. And the spirit of God is sat chit anandam, that ever existing, ever conscious, ever new joy of God that we find in meditation. And one of the ways that, one of the first ways that we find him is we have to learn this art of really of relaxing. We, or maybe better at <laughs> you know, the energization exercises. Tense with will. We have to remember the other part that it's relax and feel. It's like, oh, that's another, <laughs> another joke that I heard. Uh, why are mummies afraid of going on vacation? They're concerned that they will relax and unwind. <laughs> so, we want to, though, because if we have to learn to relax so that the energy, but rather than relax down, right, which is our normal relaxation, what we're learning in meditation, that's why the Gita is answering today. It's saying, sit alone, sequestered, and bring that energy in your temple, in your inner temple, in your spine, in your heart, in your brain, and bring it inward and upward. Swami talked about this, right? That we, we have that visualization of offering desires and attachments into the bonfire of God's bliss. He said that's good at the beginning, but then there's also the way of that, of taking that vritti and drawing it into yourself and offering it up to God as well. He said the deeper, subtler way, like how Master says in his poem Samadhi, Anger, greed, good, bad, salvation, lust, I swallowed. 
transmute it all into this vast ocean of blood of my own one being. It's learning that we don't want to separate anything from Divine Mother. We want to give her everything. And it's in that spirit of God. And the truth is the other part of what Christ is saying. What does that mean? That's talking about our divine experience. That when we meditate, and when we meditate with the right attitude, this is the other key, is we have to have that, the right approach to Divine Mother. And that's why Master he gave us this example of just loving God. And that's all that matters. And that when we approach her in that manner, then she cannot hide. And that's where the, well, that's why the woman of Samaria, she was asking. And uh, Master said that she was a fallen disciple of Christ. And he was testing her. If you drink from this well, you will thirst from Jacob's well here, you'll thirst again. But if you come and if you drink from this well, the one that which I give, it will bring you everlasting life. It's learning that this, because we're going to be just given, Divine Mother's just giving us the opportunity to say, which well do you want to tap? Do you want to go to the well of Maya that leads to that anguishing monotony that we are all well familiar with? Or do you want to tap this well and that well within, which it will bring you the, the healing water, the living water of God? He who would slake his thirst now and forever, let him not fill his Thank you, cup here from this well, from living water, sip. In the silence, in spirit and in truth, break ego's spell. Oh uh-huh.